couple of minutes and then I will start um, just to make sure most people can join and be with us from the start. Good evening, hello. So still another maybe two minutes and then I will start. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you all for joining me tonight. So this is gonna be quite exciting, I hope. Mm. Again, if I can ask um, everyone to mute their microphones, uh, just just un uh, unless you, you are talking, if you can keep your microphone muted, thank you so much. Helps a lot with the clarity of the um, webinar. Okay, I think I will be starting slowly. Uh, and just to let you know, if you need um, to watch it again, see some parts again, listen to it again, there will be a recording, it's being recorded. So just let me know and I can send you the details to the recording after the webinar. Okay, so my name is Basia Mindevich and I am an owner and tutor of an Edinburgh School of Icon Painting. Uh, so Edinburgh School of Icon Painting, for those who don't know, was created, founded in 2013 in Edinburgh. And um, since then, uh, so I've been teaching many, many people. Uh, and I think, uh, which is going to be the um, my goal for this webinar as well and for probably for all for the whole series of webinars to introduce the technique very clearly um, the traditional technique as i can say uh, but also to show the variety within it and through that, that through that to show you uh, how much uh, freedom actually is in this uh, way of working, this technique and in icon painting. Um, this is my main, I think, uh, mission uh, in my work to make this uh, technique um, feel like it's accessible, like it's possible, like it's not something uh, so very hard. This is the first goal. Uh, that anyone can do it but the second one is to show you the variety of styles and even historically how much variety even within the techniques uh, uh, and this is to me uh, to give you that freedom to experiment to try different ways and to feel more at ease with I just wish you Going can I excuse me because some, somewhere there there is I can hear some sounds. Uh, I don't know which maybe if I can ask you again to mute. I can't really mute people. Uh, okay, okay, that's better. It's, it's a bit distracting when you can hear voices. Uh, okay, so so just to give you that, so this is my goal to show you uh, the possibilities, I suppose, and then give you that, uh, then maybe help you to build your confidence uh, through that to experiment and to try different things. So what are uh, uh, we will be doing tonight, just to give you some structure. Uh, so I will uh, do short introduction to the technique. What is the, um, so we working with egg tempera technique. Doesn't mean you can't use any other techniques, but I will be working here and talking about egg tempera technique. Um, you know, this is for another night, probably another day, another workshop, another webinar to talk about other painting techniques that can be used in icon painting. Uh, but we will be focusing on, on egg tempera technique. So I will do short introduction to that, what it is, and then again as well, 
how much variety, how many different methods. Uh, and then um, after, the, after that, there will be, um, uh, you will be able to see some images of icons that are painted contemporarily. So by contemporary icon painters, some more traditional, some less traditional. I will not, tonight I will not be showing something that is, um, very far from traditional, just to kind of take it slowly. Uh, but I can tell you there are many, many icons that are painted in a very, very modern way. Uh, so just to just to kind of uh, make you aware that there is a huge variety there, and then there are icon painters that use contemporary uh, art language uh, to um depict this reality that is um that we depict in icons uh, so this is the second part part and then i want to show you some of my work which is partly traditional partly uh, more modern so more personal maybe i could say uh, however I, I don't think you can really say that the traditional icon painted traditionally even if it's being um, I, I never try to avoid using the word copy, but even if it's very close to the original, I'm sure it's still personal work. So this is not to say that something painted in that kind of style is not personal. Uh, so I'm, when I'm talking personal, I mean more style rather than, uh, you know, the experience that is uh, behind it. Then uh, the third part will be, uh, I will introduce some exercises. Uh, that first will be exercises like very basic exercises, but I always good, it is always good to go back to basics. I always recommend going back to basics, even if, if you've been doing this 10 years, 15 years, 17 years, 20 years, I always do recommend that. So we will, I will talk about that. And then the, the sort of like second part of the last part will be, uh, I will talk a little bit about the brushwork, how you can explore brushwork using different brushes, different brush stroke, different, you know, different kind of thickness of the paint. So you can, in order to show you uh, how you can, by exploring and experimenting, find your own brush work. Of course, it takes time, but this is the way to do it. So when I will be doing the exercise part, which is, will be um, the last part in two sort of two um, parts, I will in invite you to, uh, if you've got your paint to work along with me, if you don't, that's okay as well. You don't have to do it. But if you have your paints uh, at hand or br and brushes at hand, you, you are invited to work with me. If not, that's okay. You can also send me later on, send me some maybe example of your examples of your exercises. I'm happy to um, give you some advice. Okay, so this is us for to this is the structure of tonight's webinar. So first of all, to introduce egg tempera technique, the technique is um using uh, in this is the most ancient painting technique uh, that have been has been used for centuries uh, now we know a lot about it it's been researched a lot we have a lot of like technical technological information about it we know uh, you know in the in the in terms of technology we know what to do what not to do uh, so there is there's there, there is a lot of information and what seems to be rules within it which sometimes can be quiet, maybe daunting, or can be quiet sort of, you know, can, can create some sort of uh, um, free, freeze kind of experience. Because if you know there's so many rules, you would think, no, I can't do anything that, you know, that is new, that is my idea. So I'm going so and I'm going to try to show you that this is possible. But of course, when we experiment, there is a risk always. Uh, so within the rules, we can find, you know, uh, freedom. And actually, in when there is a structure, it's easier to feel more relaxed. 
if there is no rules, no structures, very hard to, to, to even find a way to experiment. So this actually I found helps. So the egg tempera ancient techniques, this technique, it's not only a panel technique. It used to be used uh, as on, uh, on walls as well as a wall painting, frescoes. Uh, and on other surfaces. Uh, in modern times, contemporary times, we mainly know it as a, a panel painting technique and especially icons, but not only. What I can tell you about this, uh, you, you, can, you can use other surfaces, but surface for egg tempera needs to be hard surface because egg tempera dries hard. So if you would be painting, deciding to paint on a canvas, uh, it's almost guaranteed that will peel off or crack or um, come off your surface. So within that, it's, it's, it's good to be aware, mindful of those basic, you know, um, not so much rules, but the qualities um, of the and the behavior of the technique. Uh, so working on the hard, stable surface is recommended. This doesn't mean you have to work on the panel. You can work on the paper as well, especially if you doing exercises, trying different things. I do recommend working on the paper. So I will uh, later on tell you what kind of paper you can use for that, uh, most people would be um, used to working on a gesso panel, gesso panel, uh, and a traditional gesso panel. Uh, so this is uh, the, the basic knowledge, basic introduction to the technique. Uh, but as well, uh, moving on a bit farther, uh, there are many methods and there always historically have been many methods of using this technique. So for example, nowadays, from, uh, from you know, like what I know of different icon, the way different icon painters work. For example, my egg medium, which I will show you in, in a wee while how, we, how I prepare it. My egg medium, I use the proportion egg yolk, and uh, white wine, white wine vinegar or lager, one to one. So one volume of egg yolk, one egg yolk, and the same volume of whatever alcohol that I am using. So this is, this is the method that I'm using. Other painters, icon painters, or egg tempera painters would be, for example, using one, two, three. Uh, then others would be using egg yolk with water in a mixture and then they add tiny touch of stronger alcohol while they mixing with pigments so this is already three different uh, methods within that technique then others uh, would be using uh, lensed oil instead of uh, an alcohol so this would be even more oily like oil, almost like oil paints uh, others will be using um, clove oil, clove essential oil, instead of um, instead of any other alcohol or water. Then water while they're mixing their paints. So there is already at least four that I told you. Historically, there has been many and many 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 methods within one technique. So to the point that. Uh, there was there was so much variety, but also difference between one egg tempera method to the other, uh, that it would be diff bigger difference than in between egg tempera and oil painting. So this is huge, okay? So this is just to show you, no, we don't need to use egg tempera technique in this, in icon painting. We can use many other techniques. Uh, the reason people historically it was used mostly is because this was avail available to the people that were uh, painting icons at the time. So this is the only reason. There is no reason behind it that we have to use egg tempera because this and that. There are many, I, I'm not going to go into it because there are many explanations for that. What I want to tell you here it's very easy to go into interpretations of so many different processes here. 
because icon is such a spiritual, such a theological, you know, reality as well. There is a lot of meaning there. And then, then there is meaning and there is symbolism. But I, wa I want you to be aware that you can go too far with that. Uh, so this is also a painting technique. Uh, uh, of course, there are certain, you know, uh, as if, like I said before, rules. Uh, um, you know, if um, especially restorers or cons conservationists would say, you shouldn't be mixing certain pigments with certain pigments because they react. And later on, sometimes even in a couple of years, the color that you applied will completely change if you mix this pigment with this pigment and so on. So this is something that it's good to, to bear in mind. But at the same time, I always think I, I am happy to take that risk because any kind of painting, an icon, uh, it's not that when I finish painting it, it stops, you know, the process doesn't stop. And especially when you think about it from a spiritual perspective, the icon goes to the church, for example, where is, is there not, not only, well, it's for you as well, because you were painting, it was your process, you know, spiritual process, but it becomes there for so many people that come. Um, and if it goes to someone's home as well, it, it, it takes this, uh, this life, you know, on that it's the life, not only of that image, not only of, only of the saint that you depicting, but also people that will be part and like, you know, taking part in the life of this icon. So that, so that in that sense, the process never stops, which to me, I don't mind if the color changes, but being aware of that, you know, you might not want that so just taking it in mind that there there are some pigments that when you mix them they you know with time change the color so this okay so this is i think um if you want to know more about the technique let me know maybe i can do another webinar or some sort of workshop when we can go more in depth uh, but I don't want to spend too much time on talking about it because, you know, it's a huge, huge, huge topic. Uh, so just what just, you know, my goal was to make you aware that there are many, many, many methods within, which means there is also so much variety and freedom. Uh, I don't know if all of you know the Ectempar technique and have worked in it. So I'm going to assume that you haven't, I know you might be, some of you might be more experienced and you have already done it, but I still would like to show, I know some people work in acrylics, which is okay as well, but maybe you wanna learn about egg tempera. So I'm going to show you a short video in which this is a time-lapse video, so it'll be a bit faster, but I'm gonna try to see if I can talk you through it as well, uh, just to show you how to make egg tempera medium. So you can maybe try it if you haven't done it. And if you've done it, you can see maybe, excuse me, another way of doing it. And then see if I can do it actually because I've never shown a video like this before. So I know it should be, I think it should be okay, but please let me know if you can see, if maybe Brian, you can tell me if you can see the video. Yes, I can. Yes, thanks. that's good. Yeah. So, okay. So this is obviously faster, but all we need to do, we need to separate egg yolk from the white. It's good to try to save the white, but sometimes I find that it's difficult. Um, so just separate. We don't want any of the white um, in our emulsion or medium. Some people call it emulsion. Some people call it medium. Uh, there is a membrane as well that is uh, holding the yolk together we don't want that membrane in the um, medium either so what we need to do we need to break the membrane and transfer what is inside the membrane to some sort of container usually it's a jar, jar is really good or some sort of container that we can then later close and then uh, in the method I'm using, then I would add the same volume of lager or white wine 
or white wine vinegar. Usually I quite prefer to use lager uh, and then mix it. You can mix it, it's okay if it's uh, fizzy, you don't mind that. Uh, it's okay to have some fizziness, fizziness. It will settle down later on. So once we mix it, we can start using it. And of course, it's good to store it. If you're not gonna be working with it, it's good to store it closed container so it doesn't dry. Um, and uh, store it in the, in the fridge. Sometimes you can store it even up to two weeks, but you need to be keep checking. You will know if it goes off. So if it goes off, what happens, you would be smelling or we, we will change, uh, it will become thicker. Uh, it will start looking differently. Or, we, or if it's really bad, it will start separating, you know, uh, and you will, will get like lumps and white, sort of white, uh, white uh, lumps inside um, uh, your egg medium. But otherwise, it's good to, to be used for about one week, sometimes even two weeks. Uh, what I recommend if you are working in a very warm room, uh, to take only some of it from your fridge and store the rest in the fridge. Very easy for it to go off if it's very warm in the room. So then you would be okay only for a couple of days. In order to be more, you know, uh, mindful uh, of, you know, wastage, it's good to then uh, keep the rest in the fridge. And uh, so this is your egg medium in the method, method that I'm working with. Uh, I add water uh, to, to, as I'm mixing my uh, egg medium with my uh, pigments. So this is uh, the, those three sort of, uh, you know, uh, materials that uh, we need for um, make, making paints, egg medium, water and pigments. In this case, of course, in this method. Um, as I said, there are many, many methods. Uh, so this is the, I think what I would like to uh, see if there are any questions at this point, because this was quite a, a technological, uh, technical part. So there might be people that want to ask questions. I think there is a, like a little hand that you can, uh, but if not, you can just unmute yourself and see if maybe that will work. That will work. Okay, Anne, yeah, Anne. Uh, what proportion, hello. hello dear, what proportion water is it compared to the medium and the pigment? Is it is it equal amounts of water and medium or? What's it will be, yeah, it will be one to three. Oh. So one part medium, then, and then three parts water. Okay. I will, I will demonstrate the mixing uh, later on as well. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Are there any other questions before we um, move to the next part? I know, I know some people already have been working with the technique. If not, I will wait another maybe minute and then I will uh, move on to the next part. Okay, so uh, if, you if, you, if there are any questions later, there will be a chance to ask as well. So what I wanted to do now, I wanted to show you some of the icons that are painted contemporarily, so not ancient icons. Some of them will be a bit closer to the very traditional style. Some of them will be a bit more modern. Um, I will start maybe with my icons. Uh, you, can, you can later on, you can ask questions about those as well. Um, so you should be able to see. So this is one of my icons that I painted. It's based on a traditional icon. Uh, however, that traditional icon was painted uh, recently. Uh, what I changed here, just to maybe give you an idea what you can change, I've changed the background, but the blue background is maybe a bit more modern, but not so unusual in older times, ancient times as well. 
uh, I did, um, I painted Halo red, which was um, different in the original icon was, it was gold. So this is again, another um, maybe interesting uh, aspect that we don't really need to always have gold uh, on icons. The gold doesn't make an icon. Uh, and then I've made this, this garment, outer garment, a bit less detailed. Uh, I didn't put so much detail, sharpness in it. It's very softly painted. It still has layers, uh, but not as many and not, not as sharply painted as the um, you know, original that I was using as a reference. Uh, so this is uh, um, one of the maybe more contemporary icons, I would say, but no, it's not like, you know, it's not crazy contemporary. And then it should be, sometimes it does, I'm sorry, sometimes it doesn't work. So I might need to uh, close and open again. Let's see if I can do it this way. Okay. Oui. Right. So this is another icon. Uh, it's, it's, it's next to the easel just to show the scale of it. So that's why just to explain, this is before completion, but you can already see it's almost finished. So we can see quite a lot. It's quite advanced in terms of um, the process. This is a very traditional icon, I would say. Uh, it's, in, it's painted in a very traditional style. Uh, the closest would be Russian style. So it's painted in the method, you know, Ectempra method that, is, that has been used in Russia and in Russian icon. But not only that, it's also, you can recognize, I'm going to try to enlarge it, um, the way that you can see the texture a little bit here. And, and then there is a flow to the fabric. It's not completely uh, it's the same here, even though it's not finished, that would be, and then on the brown as well, you can see some texture. So in Russian method, uh, it, in a Russian icon for centuries, the surfaces were painted in a different way, not necessarily very flatly and solidly as to compare, if you compare to Byzantine and especially modern contemporary Greek icon that is often painted very, um, with much more coverage. So there is not so, so much uh, texture. Of course, it's, it's you know, uh, generalization because there would be probably Greek icons that would have more texture, but in general, they would have less texture than Russian icons. So you can see it in certain areas here. But this is still painted in a very traditional way, the whole background, golden, gold background and gold halos and very traditional colors as well. So this is the next one. Then this one, this is another example. This is much more modern, I would say, in style than the first icon. Uh, so it has some, some shapes that are very unusual for uh, very traditional icons um, and the way the body, especially some angles within the body, uh, it's a bit more contemporary than even the first one. Um, then maybe you could say that the, the colors that are more gray on the faces um, are more uh, contemporary uh, than especially the, especially the one before. So this is a, an example of more uh, contemporary in style icon. Let's move on. This is uh, another icon, Baptism of Christ. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, very modern, especially the colors and um, not so many layers of so the coverage, even less. You can see there is even more lightness in the, in the layers. There is the surface is not so solid, not even not even as uh, covered as the first uh, as the as the sorry the most traditional icon. Uh, so it's very very modern. It, it, 
I've, it, there is no really usage of purple color in a historical icon and a very traditional icon. So the colors, especially here, but also shapes. Of course, the, the mountains are painted in a very traditional way in here, some details on mountains, but not this kind of um, shape. Let's move on to the next one. So this one is, I would say, quite traditional, uh, even though the blue background maybe is not that, uh, you know, widely seen in an in historic in, a, in historical icon. Uh, but this would be closer to traditional in the way it's painted. It's very traditional. The highlights on the garment, the face, uh, the the skin tones as well. Uh, I would say it's quite traditional. It's the, again, it doesn't have gold. Uh, I often prefer color to gold, but that doesn't mean it's not traditional. In uh, all old icons, you can see red halos, blue halos, especially on wall, um, you know, on frescoes, wall, wall uh, paintings. Mm. So as I say, icon is not only panel painting. Uh, let's see the next one. This is, I would say, very traditional, even though the halo is yellow, but that would be even more corresponding to the color of the gold. Um, and uh, gold actually, uh, in, uh, symbolically gold uh, symbolizes uh, divinity, but yellow color as well symbolizes divinity. So in gold, it's not only the gold itself, but it's also the color of the gold that is important here. So this is a very traditionally painted face, very traditionally painted. And then as well, the colors from the Orthodox tradition, Eastern tradition, a blue color underneath, and then a red color or brown color uh, as on the top, as a top garment. And the green color is not that unusual in the background. So this is just a detail of that icon. Let's move on. Okay, this one is based on a very traditional model, traditional um, icon, but it's painted, I would say, in a more uh, contemporary way, especially the way the call, I use the color here. Uh, and then there is a uh, there is more color of the blue on the faces blue here, so this is a, a very very I would say quite a, quite a modern contemporary um, icon in style. I can see that there is two uh, two people um, want to ask questions. Is that correct? So I've, I've got I'll, I'm going to see how many. I think this is one of the last ones. Once I finish this slideshow of my icons, I will. Um, give you a chance to ask uh, your questions. So I'll see. Uh, I think there's one or two more. So this is St. George. Um, this is a very, I would say, very traditional icon. So very traditionally painted. Uh, everything is in, painted in traditional colors. This would be closest to the Russian tradition, Russian style. Uh, the mountains and everything is painted with in a very traditional way. The Saint George as well, and that there is gold used in, as um, for his halo. Uh, the background is sort of greeny, but that's not not far away from the tradition. It's quite quite actually it's very traditional. Uh, so this is another, and I think there is one more, and then there will be chance to ask questions. This is Saint Lucy. So already this would be a um, very different situation because she, um, she is painted, uh, yes, in Orthodox Eastern style, uh, but as well, this is very unusual for icons, uh, for, for Eastern depiction of the saints. So it's, she's, she comes from the Western, um, the, 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 that idea comes from the Western tradition. That happens quite a lot because icon came, you know, from the East came to West. So uh, many people started painted icons in, for example, Catholic tradition. Even now we can see Anglican tradition. You know, many traditions started seeing something in icons that they wanted to bring to their tradition which was maybe very unusual before, which means in, for example, Catholic tradition, certain saints 
have not been painted, you know, in ancient times. Historically, we don't have the icons, so people needed to create a new icon that was based on, for example, paintings of a saint. So more sort of Western style paintings, which is a challenge, but that is a very interesting, um, you know, a task on its on itself. So that's a very interesting uh, topic as well. Uh, icon saints from different traditions that are now painted as icons. Um, so yeah, so this is the last one. I will stop the slideshow and, and I will give you a chance to ask. I can see the Margar Margaret Wilson wanted to ask questions. Would you like to ask now? Margaret, uh, you need to unmute your microphone, or is it just um, Margaret? Would you like to ask your question? Because I can't see you, so I don't know. Margaret, yep. hello, Margaret. Like okay. okay. So maybe Christian, would you would like to ask your question and then we see if Margaret will come back? Uh, yes, Hi. I want to ask a question. Hello. Hello. Uh, what color is not accept acceptable as background and why? What color is not acceptable as background? Uh, so if, if we um, approach it very traditionally, there are few colors that are not acceptable as like any in, 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 in the use in icons and that would be black. So black is only used traditionally in very few situations when it symbolizes um, evil or when it symbolizes hell, descent, death. So uh, I can give you example of icons. For example, in the icon of um, the nativity of Christ, uh, there is a, there is a um, mountain and then in the back, uh, there is a cave. So the cave is actually painted in black pigment because this, this, in this icon already, um, what is depicted there is not only the birth of Christ, uh, but also the, the predicted, you know, we already, we are, like we already know about his death. So this is the situation. Or when the crime, Christ comes down to um, as, ascend to, to take, you know, the souls from, from the damnation, uh, we've got black color there as, there as well. So this is in a traditional approach. Uh, however, there are modern contemporary icons in which you can see black that is used in different situations. This is, I would say, is a very controversial topic. Uh, I, I don't, I wouldn't say it's wrong, but just so to make you aware, uh, in a very traditional approach, you wouldn't use that unless those couple situations. I hope that answers oh. you. Okay, uh, what about in the icon of the Emmanuel? Because I once saw an icon of Emmanuel have a black background but have stars behind. It could have been painted uh, in it with intention for it to be dark blue. So if it's, you know, if it's not intentionally black, like you don't use black pigment, for example, you don't mix your pigments to be black then it's not considered black. So it could be like very dark brown, for example, which can then with time turn a bit black, or it could be bl dark blue, which is me meant to be blue. So that could be that situation, unless that was a very contemporary icon, because I do know about a couple of contemporary icons that are in which you actually have color black, <coughs> As like to and and then just to make you aware, theologically the per, the painter would be able to explain why they used black. So it's not only the artistic, you know. Be a uh, memorial. I can see that someone turned on their microphone. Uh, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. So Anne, I could see Anne, you wanted to ask. Sorry, Christian, do you have more questions? 
זה אוקיי. אנד, אני יכולה... לא, תודה. תודה. אתה רוצה לשאול שאלה גם? כן, תודה רבה, מטיה. זה מאוד מאוד. האם אתה יכול לשאול רק את הלינק עם אולי אלה פיקטורים? just all together in a group so we could study them. They were lovely. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's possible. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. the ones. Thank you. The blue virgin with all the blue halos and the blue background. It was beautiful. It's my favorite color. <laughs> Thank you. Mine too, as you can probably see from my icons. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, of course, I will send some materials as well, like last time. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you, Anne. Okay, so I can I don't know if Margaret wants to ask her questions. If no, I will now want to want to show you some of the icons of other painters, contemporary icon painters. So um, because I want to show them no, let's see how it goes. I, I don't want to download you know other people's work. So I'm going to be showing them on Facebook. There is a project in Poland. That is uh, um, that happens every year um, in September and it's uh, uh, in it's an international residency for icon painters from from a couple of countries of course it's open but usually it's Ukraine Poland uh, Georgia Belarus I can't remember if there are other countries Poland as well uh, and on that residency um, It's about developing contemporary icon. So as if like painted in contemporary style. Uh, of course, different icon painters would do it differently. Some more closer to the, to the very traditional one. Some uh, very, very far away from the very traditional. Uh, it, it's, it is important to mention that of course, you are, even if you're painting very, in a very modern way, you are still painting with, uh, con, uh, you are still connected to the tradition. So it still comes from the tradition. It doesn't appear, you know, somewhere um, complete, completely um, unattached to the tradition. Uh, so this is, I think, important. And all, all, as well as we want to always say theologically, uh, even if it's very modern, uh, There would be a reason, theological reason. Of course, that doesn't have to be so, like, you know, explain every single color, explained, every brush stroke ex explained. Of course, there's intuition as well. Uh, but as if like to introducing different, you know, uh, symbols and things like that, usually you want to be able to explain um, if it's very new. So this one is one of the icons that I wanted to show you by Danilo Movchan, who is an Ukrainian artist, and he paints in, in egg tempera as well. What is interesting, he uses gouache paint and mixes it, this with egg yolk medium. So this, is, this may be surprising for some of you. I know that not many people know that you can do it. So gouache paint in tubes that he mixes with egg uh, medium. He uses, he uses a lager in his medium, so beer in his medium. And he paints much more, as you can see. Um, so like, he creates solid uh, surfaces. As you can see, the base is quite solid. And then he paints on the top of that quite graphically, but still there is, there is a softness to it. Um, so I don't know if you can see uh, that. So this is one of the contemporary icons that are being created and that, uh, that, uh, in that you know, uh, setting, in that residency, where the contemporary style is encouraged. So then this is another one, which is actually contemporary, but it's also very traditional. It's just maybe surprising for, for an icon, I think. This, this artist come from, comes from Georgia. Uh, you can see the signature here, which is very hard to read. This is Georgian language. Uh, and this is, of course, it's, it's in style more like illustration. This is his style. Um, so you can see that the figures are very short. But this could be, you, can you could find links with Coptic icon here. Uh, and this is close to Georgian tradition as well. But it's his personal as well. 
the next one. So this is fairly traditional, but sometimes what is contemporary, it's not necessarily, you know, the shapes, how, how we build faces, but it could be the way the paint is applied. As you can see here, it's very lightly applied. You could say quite expressive painterly comparing to some other, excuse me, icons. And then you can see uh, when you look at the gold leaf, it's, uh, you can tell that it's applied on the plain wood, so without gesso. You can see the texture, the, the grain of the wood here. So it's painted on the, uh, as well painted on the plain panel, uh, which creates this more sort of quiet, uh, more matte, uh, less vivid effect. You can see the way the lamp is painted as well quite modern as well. And this is actually Belarusian painted by a Belarusian um, icon painter that paint in a very traditional uh, style, very traditional way. Okay, next one. This is, uh, you, could, you could say, actually a very traditional icon uh, because it's a folk icon from, uh, from the mountains of, uh, for, from the Camp Carpathian uh, mountains that are partly in Poland, part, partly in Ukraine. This one, this artist is Ukrainian, so he paints uh, folk icons. It's very typical for, for Ukrainian icon to be painted in that style. Uh, this is to show you the variety of styles, even historically. This is a very, I would say, very modern, very contemporary in style icon. Some of you might have seen it uh, because I know we all connected, we all online, so we can uh, we have better access. Um, painted by, by an Ukra Ukrainian uh, artist, Ivan Kademchuk. So this is her, if you saw her other icons, there, the, there is a connection there to the way she uses textures. So it's very different, I think, she paints in acrylics as well. And she uses different methods. You can see, see you, you can see here, it's almost black, but it's the dark brown. Um, Okay, this is another example. Uh, of course, this is uh, this is a painting icon painting of a church. Um, you can see the background; it's very unusual, I would say, and the shapes quite modern. The use of color quite modern, but there is a connection. You can see that there is a connection with traditional icon here as well. This, this is another one. So this is, I would say, quite traditional, uh, but it's not painting using egg tempera, uh, painted using uh, egg tempera. So this is a Belarusian artist, painted by Belarusian artist. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So this was quite large, I think, uh, quite a big panel. So it's good to see the, oh, so that's it, I think. So, okay, I'll see if there are any questions now and then I will move on to the practical part. I wanted to show you a couple of things, even if you're not able to, you know, try it tonight, you can try it after the webinar and, you know, throughout your practice. So uh, if there are any questions now, I'm happy to answer. And then if not, I'll move on to the practical part. Okay. Anne, oh, uh, yes. It's me again. You, I need to link to that website to get those pictures, to look at oh, those. No. Yeah, of You're course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will send that to everyone as well. All right. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, okay, okay. This, the, now I'll, I'm going to move on to the practical part, always, always the most exciting one and the most important one as well. At first, I'll give you let's say two exercises uh, to work with, to come back to if you have a lot of experience, if you have less experience, even better. They will give you the, 
that sort of starting point of the and it will help you to feel more comfortable more confident more at ease with the technique but also will show you that it's okay to try things and experiment and this is always the best way to learn so i'm going to change the camera now oh here it is okay so um, this the first one this is not finished yet. you could be building more layers but just to explain what i what this happens here so i've got this uh, you can you can get these panels if you are in uk easily other countries you can try to get the, something similar or you can be you can use paper as well this panel is a very how to show you it's a very thin sort of MDF panel covered with traditional gesso that you can buy uh, on the internet or in some shops, Clay, it's called clay board. I can give you details for that as well in the email that I will send you. Uh, and it's these are very affordable and amazing for practicing but if you can't access those it's okay to make you know to make your own uh, panels from M on mdfs or plywood or if that's difficult you can use paper so any card or thicker paper is good for that or you can use um, paper that is already cartridge paper or any paper that is uh, meant to be uh, used for painting. So in, in art shops or other shops, you can find paper that is good for acrylic paints, watercolors, any of that uh, of that would be okay, as long as it's a thick prime, primed paper. Uh, so this is the panel that I used here. Uh, and what, you, what I recommend doing, taking four different pigments, or four different colors, depending what you're working with. If you want to work with egg tempera, four different pigments. Here I use ultramarine blue, red ochre, yellow ochre, and green amber. Uh, you don't have to use those. This is, this is just to um, try very different pigments. So get used to application of different pigments, which what which which is blue ultramarine blue. It's very different in application than, for example, red ochre. So as long as you choose different pigments, you, they don't have to be the same ones. But if you prefer, you can start with this. So ultramarine blue, red ochre, yellow ochre, and green amber. If you like, I can also um, include this in the email with all the materials, resources. Um, and what you would be doing, applying layers of each one. So you can uh, divide your panel into four uh, sections and up, or have separate panels, smaller panels for each pigment. Uh, if you want to do it tonight, try a little bit tonight. You can just get it started with one pigment. Try a little bit and, you know, you can let me know if you have any questions as if, like, I can maybe help you, in, you know, practicing that on your own. Uh, so give you some pointers. Uh, what I recommend when you're doing it, try using different brushes of course for applying very softly squirrel squirrel brush is really good but pe some people prefer uh, sable brushes or kolinsky brushes uh, so try different brushes if you have access to different brushes uh, and i will show you in a minute also try different way of different brush strokes uh, all in already in this exercise I'll show you another one with more focus on the brush strokes. So let's see, I will use squirrel brush. Oh, I've got here actually a mix, which is like squirrel brush with synthetic, uh, which I will, will try here to show you. So this is the brush, just to show you what I'm using, squirrel mix by Rublov. It's a Russian brush. This is the brand that makes the best brushes for icon painting. So Rublov, this is squirrel mix. It's very good, actually. I didn't expect it to be that good, but it's very good. 
it holds the shape, but it's soft at the same time. So what I will do, I will show you a couple of layers with one of the pigments, maybe blue. Uh, so as well, you can, you can see uh, me mixing, you can watch me mixing. So what I will do, because uh, Anne was asking before, uh, so you can now see in practice, I'll take one drop of egg, depending of course how much paint I need. In this case, I don't want to prepare too much, so I'm not wasting. So one drop of egg medium, then I'll take um, pigment and I'm gonna be using ultramarine blue. Uh, add some pigment to the mix. Uh, in this method that I am working with a very thin, thin uh, paint, not so much pigment in the mix. So it's paint is going, paint is going to be quite weak. You will see. Of course, you know, ultramarine blue is a strong pigment, so it's not going to be the weakest, but it's not going to be too uh, opaque. We don't want it to be too opaque. And then after adding pigment, I will add the water. So it's three more, um, three drops of uh, water in proportion to one drop of egg. So I, as, you, as you can see, I use my brush to measure. And then mix. So ultramarine blue mixes really well. Some pigments need to be grinded before even adding to your, you know, to, on your palette. Okay, so we've got blue. Paint. Uh, and then I've got my little uh, tissue or it could be Kleenex. Sometimes I prefer Kleenex because it takes, absorbs more, uh, actually more paint. And uh, before, before, because this is an exercise, it's for you to become more familiar with your material and, and with your equipment. So you don't necessarily want to follow too many rules. You want to be able to test and try. So first try different thickness of um, the, mm, sorry, different, not, not different thickness, uh, dif different amount of paint in your brush. Uh, so I didn't dry this brush and I'm going to try to work like this. So you see it's quite wet. So in my book, that would be quite wet. Uh, yes, you can work like this. And as I said, uh, this is to encourage you to, to try different things. Remember not to apply wet on wet. So if you're working more wet, uh, make sure you wait enough time for the paint um, to be dry, for the surface to be dry. But we can also try to dry our brush a little bit and then carry on much drier. Of course, if we have a big surface, we need to a bit more paint, but it's as well just to give you the idea, more ideas on how to experiment. Uh, next thing that you can try is working in different directions. So maybe one layer. A bit more paint, one layer in one direction. Next layer and other di in another direction. Seem to be, be very dry. Next layer in another direction. And then, and so on. Uh, or, or you can already be painting in different directions in one layer. This is already giving you ideas of how to find your own brush marks because basically how you find it is by experimenting and trying. So you can be painting in different directions within one layer. This already gives you an, a chance to create some texture if you want some texture. And then you can, you can change that, like do another way in the next layer. So basically try many, many different ways, as well as different brushes. So if I tried squirrel brush, 
Uh, I'm going to try sable brush next. And it's not only about what the brush is made of, it's also about trying different brushes, you know, like different uh, series. So the, the, there is a number on the brush. Let's see if I can show you. For example, on this brush, one, one, sorry, one, four, ten, zero. One, four, ten, zero. You should be able to see. So this means, uh, this actually, this means uh, how long um, the hair on the brush will be uh, and how, how it's going to, uh, like, what's the tip, what sort of tip the brush is going to be. In, in the series 1410, it's usually quite long and very thin. I'll show you when I wet it because it's, uh, you can see it better. Very thin tip. So this is what the series means. So you can try different series as well. Now I'm going to try Kolinsky brush, which is much harder. Um, and it will give you more distinct brush marks. But of course, it's the way you work with the brush as well, not only the kind of brush you're using. So try, try to press it a bit harder, softer. Uh, it's just about finding your own way, basically, here. Um, and this exercise, you can always come back to. It's never a waste of time to do it. It's never, you're never too experienced to do something like this. Uh, always good to go back to basics. So I'll give you, we've got plenty time. So if you want to keep trying it, it's okay for you to do it now. Uh, reminder, it's good to do it with different colors, different pigments. So this way you get used to using different pigments as well. Every pigment works in a different way, applies in a different way. So it's good to be able to try um, in this simple exercises to get used to using different material. Uh, okay, so second exercise, you don't need to be changing, you can keep working on it. I realize you won't be able to do all the exercises within this short webinar. So it's just to give you the, the material, you know, the uh, ideas to work with later on. Uh, sec and you can of course do it on the same panel. Uh, but I've got a separate one just to show you. This is the second exercise. In this exercise, you're not only practicing different brush strokes, but you're also learning to um, model um, your shapes, to, uh, to work with um, gradation. Uh, which we know in this step, the traditional method and in many modern methods, we use lights instead of shading in icon painting. So you can see here the brush stroke are more distinct. So this is a different texture. This is text. This is more textured way of doing it. Then here you can see much softer here, even more softer on those two. So you can try different ways as well. Keep in mind working with different brush strokes, different, uh, different thickness, different brushes, and a bit more paint on your brush, a bit less paint on your brush. Uh, what is the goal here? And you can do it with use, using circles as well, um, triang triangular shapes, different shapes. Basically what you're doing, you start from your base, so it was your pigment, this is, for example, green amber. Then gradually add more and more white to your base and create smaller shapes, smaller within that, smaller within that, smaller within that. Of course, here you can see more difference, but the goal is for you to create that kind of gradation that there is more sort of softer um, transitions. And they will, this will give you a lot of um, practice. It will help you to develop, again, your own brush marks, your own way of building lights, but also amazing and a great, um, you know, experience in, in creating shapes, building shapes using lights. So this is the a very important exercise, those two. Um, you can keep working on your surface. 
uh, trying different brush strokes. Maybe if you uh, then later on have some questions for me about that, how to make a bit more like advice, how to practice that, what is the best way, you know, um, what I would say, of course, always the best way is just to keep trying. But, you know, if you, if you want to know a little bit more, I'm happy to uh, towards the end to answer more of your questions. But uh, keep, uh, you know, you can keep uh, painting if you are doing it. So as well, uh, now I wanted to tell you a little bit about brushes. Uh, different icon painters would prefer different kind of brushes. Some uh, icon painters only work with squirrel brushes. Some icon painters only work with Sable or Kolinsky brushes. Um, some would use a combination, so a combination of brushes. So for example, you could be using uh, soft squirrel brushes for surfaces and maybe Sable or uh, Kolinsky brushes for detail, especially very fine lines and details. Um, we can mix another color. And I will show you how different how the different brushes uh, can be used in trying to develop your own brush marks or just to practice. You don't have to use it like this. You can just use it to practice, to become more familiar with it, to become more confident. Doing exercises always helps you a lot in, in, in a way that you become more confident in your work. So I could, I'm going to mix maybe red ochre and keep my uh, ultramarine blue. And maybe I'm thinking to mix some white as well. Let's, let's see what happens. So we'll use this brush. So again, I will use my egg medium. Some red ochre. I've got a very red, uh, very sort of browny red, red ochre here. So I don't need too much pigment. It's okay as well to add more water, but just then watching the surface. Okay, and now, so um, Kolinsky brushes are harder. Some people find it easier in creating more like shapes, sharper shapes and details because Kolinsky brushes uh, have stronger, keep, keep the shape better. So they will keep the shape much more when you press it, press it, work with it, they keep the shape much better than squirrel usually. Um, my suggestion is to try with Kolinsky, try to do lines like this, like smaller strokes. And then maybe press a bit harder. Then do longer strokes. See what happens then. You can do this maybe in an angle. Try to do in all different directions like I showed before. You can do exactly the same with, uh, obviously, with squirrel. So this is just an idea of trying different brush strokes. And I'm sure you will have your own ideas. So my idea is just for you to get, to get you started with this, uh, this exercise and then, then this sort of process of developing your own strokes. Try bigger brush. So again, Kolinsky, but bigger. Try uh, maybe more diluted paint, thicker paint as well. So bigger, maybe 
like try to spread the paint a little bit. So a bit more wet, a bit more dry. Uh, again, then some people prefer squirrel brushes. So here I've got pure squirrel brush as well. Some people like working with smaller brushes, some bigger. But if you really like to work with small, maybe you can challenge yourself and try a um, bigger brush and the other way around. So, and then, so for, for uh, squirrel brushes, I've got the Russian ones. This is Chernaya Rechka, but that's like not made anymore. So it was replaced by Rublev. Uh, and I say it's, it's, it's a series 1410, but there are, you know, many preferences within. So we can try different brushes and do the same. So faster maybe see what happens if you work faster, see what happens if you work slower, different angles, overlapping, many, many different ways. And it's just as well, I'm, I'm doing this just to show you, you know, tell you about different brushes. Some people use uh, those brushes for uh, applying bases, foundations. So this is a mob brush that is usually used for uh, watercolors. Some people use it in icon painting to do bay, like to create foundations and maybe uh, glazing as well. This brush is, you need to be mindful, absorbs a lot of paint. So if you're working with it, be careful. Uh, to let your um, surface dry. It's gonna dry a bit longer than if you're using um, the, uh, the, the Russian brushes. You know, well, the Russian, the uh, uh, brushes they're usually used for icon painting. So this one will take much more paint, absorb much more paint. So when you press it, you will release more, release more paint. So you need to be mindful of that, but experiment with that as well. Especially if you, of course, it's going to behave different if you're working on a panel. So you can experiment with that as well. But being mindful that it holds much more paint. So if you press harder, you will release a lot, release a lot of paint. So it's not only about um, kind of strokes, the direction, but also how much you press. Uh, so experiment with that as well. When you're working on the... Um, you know, paper on other surfaces that are not your icon. It's okay for things to, you know, happen like you do, you lift some paint, that's okay. When, and when you learn to work with that on the practice surface, if that happens on your icon, you will be okay as well. Because if, you know, you can always, you don't have to think like you need to be starting over. You can always, you know, fix the problem, if that's the, that's the, you know, fix the mistake. In fact, sometimes mistakes actually help you to, to find the creative ways of doing it. Uh, I've got this also, this Kolinsky brush. It's a bit different. The other one was more uh, pointed. So you can try less pointed brushes as well, rounder brushes. Some people use flat brushes as well. I don't have here, but some people use flat brushes. You can try that as well. See which brushes you prefer for bigger surfaces, for smaller. Some people still like to work with small brushes on, um, on uh, mm, large surfaces. So you will be very preferential, you know, very individual. Uh, okay, so this is um, an idea of different strokes. And those two exercises, well, well three exercises, because this is another exercise on its own. Try different strokes as well, different brush marks with different pigments as well, just until you feel, well, you can always do it, as I said, even if you have years and years of experience. But uh, initially, until you feel more sort of at ease, confident, and as well, what happens, the same idea as when you draw, when you sketch and draw, uh, what happens when you do a lot of drawing on of one um, face, for example, or like one eye, uh, when, when you come to, uh, I don't know, 15th time, 
suddenly everything just comes on its own like you were like you weren't doing it it's that kind of feeling you know when I it, it takes a while to develop but the more kind of mindful you are of um, just letting go allowing process to happen the quicker it will come that kind of natural sort of intuition you know the come the sort of work that comes from intuition from from your sort of heart soul i would say comes from your body as well as connected to your body uh, so what I, what i wanted to say the uh, just being kind of kind to yourself uh, and being open to making mistakes and being frustrated as well. If you get frustrated, just leave it for the, leave your icon or your exercise for a while and then come back to it. So if you want to, if people want to, you can keep sort of, the, you can do a couple of uh, brush strokes, do some, you know, a little bit of work. If you've been doing it, keep doing it. And then maybe in a couple of minutes, because we're getting close to finishing, uh, there will be more time for questions. So you will be ask uh, you will, you will be able to ask more questions, and then we will we will finish. So I'll give you another couple of minutes to. I was gonna mix uh, white, but I didn't eventually. Uh, so um, next couple of minutes, uh, I will give you that time uh, for maybe trying a little bit. If you're not doing it, just kind of slowly coming out of that kind of stage. Uh, part of the webinar and then there will be time for more questions i hope because i've saw some people um lost uh, connection with us but they came back i hope you were able to came back and then you can um hear me if you lost a part of the webinar you can uh, there will be a recording so if I, when, I will send an email to everyone with the materials and the resources from the uh, webinar so you can and, and you can let me know if you want to have an access to the recording i know sometimes you might have missed uh, because of the connection or some other reasons Okay, so maybe uh, I will give you this time, last 10 minutes of the webinar for questions. If you have any questions about what I was talking about, any part of the webinar, uh, some, uh, some of the exercises, any, anything uh, that uh, comes to your mind. I don't know if like, uh, okay, I thought someone was. I, I don't know, Anne, if you wanted to ask. Something. Yes, about, yeah. about pigments. Mm -hmm. um, where do you get yours from? What What's the most sort of the, the widest range that you would recommend? Um, Ed, so are you based in UK? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can you uh, can you can buy your pigments from a place called Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, I think it's called Fitzpatrick. Uh, so they sell Kramer pigments. Um, I think I can show everyone what's the name. Kramer pigments are the German uh, pigments, German pigments. These are quite popular, maybe the most popular. Um, so I'll show you, maybe I'll try to show you uh, the shop. So everyone can see, just to make sure. So this is, this is the shop. It's based in London, but they deliver okay. everywhere. And they have quite, quite a good range of pigments. Uh, also, Jackson's Jackson's Arts have yep. pigments as well, and I saw they have their own brand. I imagine oh. I don't know if that would be maybe Kramer's, but I saw they have their own brand. It's quite good because they also have smaller containers. That is always a problem that usually they come in the bigger containers and you know in that way you would never use it 
even yeah. if you'll be painting like for you know like every day so um in jackson's uh, they have smaller containers mm. even sometimes i think 25 gram good. It's quite good so these are these are the places there's also cornelison uh, in london for pigments these are more expensive what is the name sorry cornelison cornelison and sun i think for those who are not in UK but also for those who are in UK um, I for example started using Russian pigments recently and Russian pigments uh, you can get from a supplier in Poland but they do send to UK as well so uh, we recently ordered quite some of them, they're really good quality, but uh, also a lot of these pigments you need to grind before using. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So these are, I don't know if you can see here or maybe, but these come in slightly small containers, but slightly bigger than 20 gram. Uh, and they're they're really good pigments. So it depends on obviously where you get where you where, where it's made. It's going to be different quality. Mm. Okay, now nice. have a link to that one then. To that one as well. Okay, okay, I will do that in the. So I will send a couple of links with uh, pigments as well. Uh, yeah. So I think this this is quite quite few suppliers um thank you thank you for your question Anne, as well thank you uh, that's when anyone else have a question or wants to say something before we finish about any of the parts of the brian you don't yeah, just want... just want to say thank you very much it's been an excellent um session and and very interesting um, I, I was interested in the Rublev brushes are not so easy to get hold of in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just tried to get another set from Amazon and they said that um, they don't have any more and they don't know whether they're going to get any more. That's my fault because I got a couple <laughs> from them this week. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> there we are, you got it, yeah. But thank uh, you. Yeah, it's been good. No yeah. worries. Yeah, thank you for thank you for for taking part as well. Thank you, Andrew. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. I'm really grateful. It's wonderful. Thank you. Does anyone else wants to ask something? Uh, teacher, I want to ask. Yes, Christian. A question. Uh, here I cannot buy in Indonesia. We cannot buy pigment. I used to use acrylic for uh, my painting. So uh, I was beginning to try the ectembra and I find a tile grout for the pigment. I don't know if this will will this will work well. I use uh, tile grout for the colors and I use charcoal for the uh, black. <laughs> Yeah, what yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely there is a, there is black uh, pigment that is made of charcoal as well. Definitely. You might need to grind it a bit more. Yes. Uh, before you using but yeah, yeah, of course. You can you can try, you know, that's going to be take a bit more time, but you can maybe try to co collecting some earths like soil for earthly pigments. <laughs> You could okay. do that. I've done. Uh, yeah, I used to do it. It takes a bit more time, you know, but you can do it. As well as what uh, what you can try, if you can buy gouache paint. Gouache paint. You can mix it with egg medium. So this is basically oh. egg tempera. In gouache, there is the the big the best quality of pigment in that paint, even though it's in the tube. And you can mix it with egg medium and water. And try that. <clears throat> thank okay, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, 
Uh, teacher, I have another question that is related to this webinar. Um, my question is, what vibes do you feel when you pray in front of the contemporary icons? Uh, when you pray in front of the contemporary icons, uh, because I never try to. Yeah, for for me, it depends on an on an icon. You know, some of them don't don't really speak to me, and some of them like re like really move me very deeply. You know, so I think it's it's very personal and individual. It can be much more. I don't know. It's very hard to explain, and I wouldn't want to compare. You know, like which oh. one is, is is what because, you know, like traditional icons. I can have so a sim worth... very similar experience, you know. But sometimes with contemporary, I I feel like really connected. If that makes sense. With different... So it's worth trying. Yeah, I think it's worth trying. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah. Last year. Yes. Do you do you know the um, iconographer? Um, she's Finnish, but she's done a lot of modern iconography. Uh, she's done written a book about it. Mm, she's Finnish. Oh. No. It rings a bell, but uh, I'll, I'll go. And get okay. Thank you. Yeah. So we can. Uh... Some of the modern ones are very close to traditional ones, but it's very, 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 I think it's very interesting. And it's also, you know, we use the language that is our language. That's what uh, some people say, you know, contemporary language. It's like, what is it, it? It is our language, you know, of our times. So it's only natural that we would want to use it in something like icon that is so meaningful, you know, and so personal often. Uh -huh. Anyone anyone else have questions? I also as well like that, um, um, the idea about it that, uh, and then reminder that people painted in that sort of style because that was the style of their time. So, uh -huh. When, when we only repeat the style from like 14th century, uh, I'm not saying it's not, you know, it's not like prayerful, it's not spiritual, it's not personal. Uh, but I think it's not always our language, it's borrow language, if, if you like, you know, it's the language that is not, not longer our language, like, it's like spoken language changes. Some of those icons from that Polish course were very interesting because they were, they had, you could see the tradition, but they had a modern application. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. yeah. I always, I always think it's, uh, it's connected. It comes from that tradition. So it's connected. So you can tell it comes from, from, you know, tradition that has been growing and developing for centuries. But there is a, there is a, there is a new, approach to it yeah i like that hmm. yeah it's quite it's good it's really good to explore that i think sorry brian did you find it because we, we just about to uh, your your microphone is not on yeah solaryness i don't know that i don't know her work i like I need, I need to explore them i need to it's um, some some of them are quite they look very traditional, but some of her colours, I think, are quite interesting. Mm -hmm. The way she's used them. Um, Could you spell the name, Brian? Soroness. Solrun. S O L R U double N N E S. Soroness. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie says. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Kathleen. Okay. Okay. So this is um, this is us for tonight. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. 
Uh, there will be another webinar, but not next week because I'm teaching the intensive course. So in two weeks, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure which uh, topic yet, but I will definitely let you know. Uh, and also I wanted to say that I will be doing a work online workshop on making panels, not making panels, ma uh, making gesso for panels and preparing that uh, in July, end of July. So if anyone is interested, you can let me know. Um, yeah, thank you again. Thank you so much for being here, for taking part, for your questions, participation. Uh, and I hope to see you again on one of the webinars or maybe some of the workshops. Uh, hope you thank have a... Thank, thank you, you, Anne. Yeah, thank you very much. You're very grateful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Thank bye. You, everyone. Bye. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Queen. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.